Hey everyone, here's some Witcher 3 beginner tips for you. So if you're brand new to the game, have you been living in a cave or something? This is the best RPG I've ever played. I really love this game. I've played hundreds of hours of it and I'm coming back to it in 2021. Anyway, when you uh, get the game, it's cheap as chips now. You can get it for about £14 on the Xbox and if you've got a Xbox Series X like I've got here the cool thing is this game looks beautiful in 4k and it runs really nicely on the old um, Xbox One X the 4k used to chug a bit when it got graphically intensive this is no longer the case so it's well worth playing on the Series X anyway let's talk about what happens when you load the game and the options that you've got so obviously if you're just brand new to the game you've got new game and options so the options nothing too exciting in here to think about uh, the one thing i will just talk about very briefly is under the language you can have your subtitles on or off i find the game's more immersive with the subtitles off but you can leave them on if you wish you can also have different text different languages just don't put it on here if you want to then switch back to it because then it's all in a language that you don't understand if you've picked a, a random language. Um, by default, there's audio for English or Polish. Um, the download additional languages doesn't seem to work for me at the minute, but maybe it does on your one, I don't know. I think some other languages may be available. So that covers that. Display options, a quick thing I just want to show you here under advanced. Graphics mode on the Xbox Series X, I get the options for 4K mode or performance mode. Now I'm running at 1080p here, so this isn't going to make much of a difference. But um, rest assured, if you play it in 4K, it runs fine. On a Series X, it runs beautifully. Um, Post-processing, you can have motion blur and blur on. Um, gamma is worth having a quick look at, um, that you want to have the logo sort of faintly visible. And indeed, I can see this a bit better on my um, sort of recording computer here as opposed to my TV. I found I needed it much brighter on the TV. So you can adjust it there and see as you see fit. You can rescale the HUD to make sure it's within your um, display size, as mine was. And the HUD configuration, this is more when you're more used to the game. You can turn various bits of it on and off if anything annoys you. Um, you can do it all there. So I'm on version 1.60 here. We're all good. So let's jump back out and let's start a new game. Because you would think it would be relatively simple, but oh no, you like fresh start. Hearts of Stone only, Blood and Wine only, New Game Plus. You won't have that one because that's because I completed the game. But these are expansion packs for The Witcher 3 and they're really cool, particularly Blood and Wine. I love Blood and Wine and you can simulate playing from there if you wish um, with one of these. But if you're brand new to The Witcher 3, you should start with a fresh start. So when you're here, you've then got your difficulty levels. Um, I personally didn't have a problem with Blood and Broken Bones the first time I played The Witcher 3. It's a good challenge. Um, this one I would expect to be easy peasy and this one is okay, but I personally would go with that one. This one unlocks so once you've completed the game you can go to Death March. I don't think it's on a standard, I might be wrong, but I think that was when you, when I completed. Um, and yes, yeah, more challenging. So Blood and Broken Bones is what I would suggest for you. This gets a little more difficult in combat. Also you're healing, you can't heal by meditating. You have to use um, your various potions and stuff. So it's a little bit of a challenge and I like a challenge. Okay, so let's start with that. Show tutorials. I don't think this was on years ago when I started playing this game. Um, these are actually pretty good. So um, you know, my beginners sort of tips is is not you know i was going to think about doing a full guide but i don't think it's worth it because these are actually rather good now i highly recommend you turn them on i'll show you what these look like in a minute this is confusing to a new player simulate witcher 2 save if you're brand new to the witcher 3 and you've never played the previous witcher games this won't make much sense to you at all uh, i don't want to spoil it for you but if you put it on i'm not going to spoil it here i'm just going to tell you what happens <laughs> but vaguely there's a conversation that opens up which allows you to to say what you did in the witcher 2 now you may have no idea what that what you did there so you can look it up online and certain choices will open up certain different quests for you and have different characters available or not um, so you may want to have that versatility or if you don't really care about the previous witcher 2 and you don't really care about additional quests you can just leave it off so up to you there so i'll stick it on just for argument's sake it says so i want to start a new game yes okay so that means i will lose auto saves on my previous games but i had a manual save now you will then get some very lovely 
um, stories and four motion videos that will start the game and these are beautiful. Now one thing I want to point out with The Witcher 3 is this is not a game that you rush. This is a game that is very much about the storyline, about the characters and if you stick with the storyline and don't skip all of this you're in for a real treat. You have 60 plus hours at least and you know typically 100 to 200 gaming hours loads of different conversations and you get to really enjoy some of these fantastic characters throughout the game i highly recommend you watch every piece that you see and don't skip nothing because it really builds the world and helps you sort of believe in the world so this is not a game um that's going to be that over in 10 hours you have to invest in this game to get the best out of it so you can see lovely lovely look to it still looks great in 2021 it, despite being several years old this game is an absolute masterpiece of storytelling and the it's one of the few games where by the end of it there were dozens of characters that i fondly remembered uh, and enjoyed listening about and, and watching in the game it's really entertaining so so you have a mix of these full motion videos where you're not really interacting so much with them but also lots of in-game conversations which we'll get to in a minute so i won't show you much of this now i'm just going to skip this now but like i say don't skip it yourself you know enjoy it but for the speed of this movie i'm just going to skip past this and not spoil it so when you go to the game you know what's going on now the tutorial starts in Kier Morhen, which we've got here and i'm not going to cover too much of the game at all I just want to get you used to a few things that are going to help you in the game because you're going to get a bit confused uh, to begin with, but less confused than I did because the tutorials are a lot better. So again, we've got this stuff here, so I'm just going to skip past it um, because I don't want to spoil it for you. And you see now it says welcome to the tutorial and it tells you various things. You can disable the tutorial messages at any time in the options menu, but I suggest if you're a brand new player, go through them all. It will take some time. One thing I want to point out with this game, it will take you several hours to get comfortable with the controls. Now that sounds scary, but what you've got to bear in mind is there are hundreds of hours of gameplay in this. So you've got to be committed to it and enjoy it. You don't have to do all of that learning all in, at one time, but you'll just gradually open it up over time. And certain areas, if you're still not sure of it, have a look at my YouTube channel and I've got lots of different tutorials on the various different areas, which I will give you a very quick whistle stop tour on in just a minute so you can see the tutorial will say okay continue and then it says use my witcher senses to find the key in the bedroom door so you can see it t tells me what i'm looking at on the hud the mini map the objectives um, and you can continue around and do as it says so i can walk around with my left stick right stick um, and you can see you know it's going to ease me into some of the controls so i've, I've got witcher senses here so it says hold the left trigger hey you can read i suppose but i can examine this you might bring me some more once you're done training. Uh, this is one of the main characters over here. So you can interact with people in this main area. So The Witcher is a game you really don't need to rush. Sometimes it, it tries to push you through the game. Um, but just to show you a bit of interaction. So you have lots of these sort of conversations going on in the game. Not to mention unreasonable. And then you have various different choices you can do in the game. Um, these do affect things in certain cases. So you can see dialogue option, press A to choose it. Um, but I'm just going to skip out of this. I don't want to spoil it for you. Yeah, better go see Siri. Go and train with her. Then come back. It'll give me a chance to put my face on. Of all the women I've known, you're the only one who does that before. You've known many. What's it matter? Only ever thought of you. What a smoothie. Um, one of the very interesting things about this RPG is that Geralt is obviously, you know, not a custom character. He is very much, a, you know, the character that you play. And I really got to enjoy Geralt's dry sense of humor throughout the game and sort of get guiding him. You know, I really rooted for the guy as I played the game, and I'm sure you will too. And that's part of the reason why you don't want to skip conversations to grow to enjoy his conversations. So we can see here I found the key and it gives me hints. So you can see these tutorials do this all the way through. So I'm going to just skip through some of this stuff and just talk a little bit more about um, some of the areas that you get to. So uh, I'm not going to ruin this area much, but we'll just see a little bit of it. Uh, there's a whole lovely cutscene here with uh, some of the main characters and I'm going to skip through the whole lot because I don't want to spoil it for you. Um, I just want you to play it but it goes on for quite a while like you can see here 
and some bits if you hit skip like I am here, which I don't want you to do. I'm just getting to the point where I can show you more stuff. Um, it's very enjoyable watching all of this stuff and interacting. Uh, there's also, which we'll get to in a minute, you can begin a tutorial here in combat. Um, again, I'm going to be teaching you to suck eggs to do that, so I'm going to skip it. Um, but do do the tutorial in combat. The Witcher combat is quite convoluted to get your head around, so the more practice you get at it, the better. Um, so go through that as well. Listen to all this storyline, and there will be some bits that you may not really know from the previous Witcher games. I came to The Witcher 3 as a brand new player. I'd not played any of the previous ones. Um, sorry, I just skipped past this. Uh, but that wasn't a real problem. There was only a couple of areas where I was like, what's this going on? And of course, you can look up online what happened in the previous ones if you wanted. So you can see here, I can skip the tutorial, go straight to free training, and then it'll just go, okay, whatever. So yeah, you're seeing a few basic clips. So you can see this game still looks beautiful several years later. Um, there's also talk of CD, CD Projekt Red revisiting this for a special version for the Series X, where I guess they'll up the frame rate, maybe improve the textures perhaps, I don't know. I think that's penned for some point in 2021, but I don't think it's been confirmed yet. Um, in case you've been living in a cave, uh, CD Projekt Red also made Cyberpunk 2077 recently, which obviously is a very big title that's recently appeared. Um, but in my opinion, The Witcher 3 is a better game. I much preferred the characters in it. I thought it was a deeper game, more enjoyable. I loved the whole sort of background and, and you know, information on it, but very much enjoyed it. So let's skip all this again. See lots of waffle. <laughs> and, but like I say, don't let it put you off because it's really nice um, storyline. You know, it's just like watching an epically ridiculous long film or TV series and very good to, to watch. So the first part of the game, you're very much driven um, to learn various bits about the the sort of background of the story that's and that also um, you don't have to progress it at the speed that you want uh, at a speed that you're not happy with so although I'll say go here you can take your time and have a little look at things it'll introduce you to a quick bit of combat here tell you about monsters um, and I'll show you very quickly a bit of bit of bat battling here, probably a bit rusty because I've not played this for a little bit while, but you can block, you can attack, you can roll, dodge, and you've also got these cool magic things, that was the uh, right trigger I was using there. So there's a little yellow bar that charges, so the combat tutorial, if you go through that, tells you all about that and explains it all, um, but I'm just sort of doing a bit of it as we go. But it's quite a good little challenge as your first little battle. Uh, and then various things will drop on the floor. Which it might tell us when we finish the battle. Let's have a little look. So striking generates that. Adrenaline points. So if you're confused about all of this or you miss it in the tutorial, you can revisit some parts in the tutorial in the text-based stuff. If you're still confused, though, have a look at my channel because I've got various ones on combat tips, which has been viewed a lot of times on YouTube and all the different areas. So it gives you this war, you know, information about vitality regeneration. So you can see my red bar at the top is getting low and it says on blood and broken bones and death march, meditation does not gen regenerate vitality. Um, so you need to use food and drink uh, to, to do it or potions um, so I'm going to talk quickly about potions as well because this is going to be a big help if you do decide to go on this difficulty because I'm not sure it's covered this early in the game so I'm going to talk about that just before we go off so you can see it's saying right off we go let's go mount the horse so we can jump on there just press A I'm just going to dismount again though because I'm not ready to move off ah, sorry let's just jump off because you can see all this stuff on the floor. There's these red dots in the HUD up the, to up the top right. And you can just go and grab all of this stuff. So shortcut there, you can see on the Xbox Series X is take all, which is the Y button rather than A. Get used to doing that as you go over to something that you can collect. Um, so we'll do that there. Black crystal. Why do I think this is Yen's? So there was something there that I found on the ground that if you run straight off you wouldn't have seen, which is something that has a bit of quest information. There's also a sign here. So take your time with places, just because it says ride off doesn't mean you should ride off. 
um, you can have a good think about stuff. Now, the thing I wanted to point out here um, before we go off is there is some celadine. Now, you're probably thinking, what on earth is that? And rightly so. Uh, and this is something that wasn't covered in the game. It might pop up in a tutorial later. But what I want to show you is if you hit the menu button, um, you've got all these areas to learn about. Now, I've got tutorials on all of these areas on my channel. So have a little look at them and they will be explained. But what I want to point out, if you're playing Blood and Bones, um, is to go into the alchemy and have a little look because you've got yeah it tells you a little bit about it here um but what i particularly want to point out is the potions so you press uh, a to open up the potions then scroll down with the left stick you've got some potions that you can make and one of the most important is this one here the swallow potion and you can see the ingredients here dwarven spirit celandine and a drowner brain and you can actually get this stuff fairly quickly uh, and some of it is in this location here. So that's celandine. We can already collect some here. So I just wanted to point this out. You can actually collect all of this before you get to the main zone. And there's no weight to any of these. So you can just collect stuff as you go. Some of the stuff will make no sense to you whatsoever because uh, you haven't really got any diagrams. But as you go through the game, you or sort of in recipes or anything. But as you go through the game, you'll get more and more stuff. So if you collect stuff, um, you know, you you'll be in better stead to make stuff really quickly. So there was some celandine there. And then when you need to kind of keep an eye on it, um, what it looks like, uh, so you can see a bit more of it. So now we're moving. Again, you can see the tutorial says hold A while moving to canter. Run, Roach. You can see I've got my sword drawn here. If you want to put it back, it's the right directional button, left directional button. Can't remember whether it says in the tutorials, but you've got two different types of sword. You've got silver sword, which is for uh, battling with monsters and you've also got a steel weapon which is for battling humans and you know non-monster type things and then Vesemir will push you on to to keep going this way and crack on really but you'll see as we go along we'll see some plants that look familiar so that's not the one we want but there are more plants here so you just want to look around just take your time he'll wait for you as you're exploring uh, and this is the same with um the other CD Projekt Red game, uh, Cyberpunk 2077, in that the game tries to rush you in places. You like, you really don't need to. You know, you can take your time. So have a little look around, get used to your surroundings, get used to moving uh, Geralt around and the controls. Because um, yeah, you've got plenty of time. There's very few things Faster. that are time sensitive in The Witcher 3 um, that you need to be too stressed about. Is that Celandine there, or is that more blow ball? Let's have a little look. That is Celandine. There we go. Look, that's another little sign now. What's that? Bandits, blah, blah, blah. So this stuff, you know, you can easily miss in The Witcher 3 just by gallivanting off without seeing, you know, what's around. Some more Celandine there. So we've got three already, and we only need five. Um, we've got to be careful. There's a monster nest there, so... We won't run into that just yet. Um, but yeah, just have a little look now and again as you're riding along uh, to get the ingredients for that um, potion. And I'm going to do that in this sort of beginner's tips. I'm going to try and help you get That's that already um, by the time you get to the first Boy, area. So. Exactly going our way. We have a side. The Northern Realms. Radovid's Realms, don't you mean? Tamaria and Edirne are no more. Radovid's pledged to restore the old borders as soon as he wins the war. Believe that? <laughs> Gotta believe something. That's what keeps us going. That's some more. Yep. Yeah. Could do with one more. Is that one? Nope. So if you look around in this area, you should find some fairly quickly. Is that one? Yeah, there we go. And the reason why I say this is once you've got this potion, um, it's pretty useful to have in your inventory because you can run short on food. Let's go. Uh, whereas if you've got alcohol in your inventory, which you find loads of over time in The Witcher, um, you can always make new potions as you meditate. So that's pretty cool. So I'll go through this village here. Again, you can take your time. The other thing it said that you need is uh, drown a brain, 
uh, and there are actually some drowners here. Now this is where you've got to be a bit, so fast, a bit brave really. This is where you can get them, so you might want to come back later to this. Um, but we'll have a little go. So you can see my health is low, so I've hit the up button to use the bread that's in my inventory because you've got a little bit of that to start with. Um, and we're just going to have a, a quick look at this. So left button shows quick access things, but also these signs, which there's a signs tutorial on my um, channel um, to explain all of this. We'll just get that off for the minute. I'm just going to highlight Igni because I'm going to use that to fry these these little dudes here um, so as you go up close your sword should auto draw like that and then I'm just dodging with the B button and again if you want some combat tips have a look on my channel oh a bit violent so I'm only level one so this is quite a challenge at this point so so you can see I'm in trouble <laughs> maybe I'm getting too cocky here so I've backed off just to have a bit more food and they will run away. So we'll just heal back up and have another go at them in a minute. So I fried them using right trigger with Igni, which is a rather cool one. Now we've got one left, so it should be... Oh, he jumped out of nowhere, didn't he? Where did he come from? Stamina's going to take a little while to come back up. Come back. There we go. So that's obviously quite um, tough to begin with. Um, you might have seen, you might want to go back on the movie bit when I was hovering over the drowners and it was showing, uh, this is why it was quite tough. There's actually some treasure here. So this is a really cool thing to get out early because look at all this stuff I just found by defeating these guys. So maybe a little bit co cocky there, um, but up to you whether you want to do it. And then when we go back up here, I'm just jumping up. Whoops. Can I jump up here? I can't remember. How do I jump? There we go. B, sorry. I should think. Look at the inventory. So if we have a little look at this um, alchemy now. I think the only thing we're missing now is some alcohol. Where's it gone? Uh, oh, yeah, so we've got enough drowned brain, we've got enough salandine, we just need dwarven spirit which we can probably get where we're off to. So let's have a little look. So. We can get another story break. Time later, blah de blah. Skip this again, don't want to spoil it for you. So, there is a typical decision where you could get something, but you may get something different depending on whether you want money or whether you want to be nice. Um, depending on your ch actions, you may get more or less help uh, depending on what you say. There's no right or wrong answer with these things, so don't worry too much about it. It's just. Uh, thing to help you out so again the tutorials are showing us stuff to ease us through uh, and explain new bits so the system of the witcher 3 is overwhelming to begin with there is so much to learn and like i say it takes you hours to get used to everything that you've got on display that said the first zone you go to which we're going off to with vesemir here has some fairly low level stuff so you can ease yourself into it and again take your time with the quests and stuff and um, it's not so scary. So again, this tutorial is good that it shows us all of this. But I think, and this is where I'm, I'm going to finish this little movie up. Just have a little look. That we can get the last ingredient probably in here. I would, I would guess. But again, I'll skip the, skip the conversation so we don't spoil it for you. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay. 
Okay, so I can go and see what she's got. got behind the counter. Let's see. Okay. Okay. Is it that one? Dwarven Spirit. So you can see it's 47 gold. I've got two or 47 crowns or whatever it is, in which I think it's crowns. So I'll buy one of these. I only want one. Okay. Um, and if we then go into, whoops, hit the wrong button, sorry. Let's just. There a contract on here. Nap, you snap. Again, try not to uh, spoil it. Nation. So I guess it's this button. I've not. Yeah. Then Just skip it. Okay. And there's the ending conversation. Help you. Then I'll. Right, skip, 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 because I just want to show you this last thing. So when we've got all of those ingredients, yeah, 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 we've read all that. Wish those were around when I started this. It would have been so much easier. You can see I've got all the parts pr present for the swallow potion. Now I can craft it. Uh, and that makes a big difference to you as you're healing yourself. So that's the start of it. Uh, you can see we get all all uh, explanations of all this stuff in my inventory. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I think I should turn this all off. Right. Potions, there we go. So there's the swallow potion. And what it does is gives you vitality regeneration for 20 seconds. And I think it's the most useful thing to grab at the start of the game. We also had various other bits. Um, all that stuff that I found in the treasure chest uh, does various stuff. So again, look at my other tutorials to help you with that if you're not sure. So I've chucked that in my consumable slot. Oh, for goodness sake, just let me out. I know what I'm doing. So you can see that on the left, see it says swallow. So I use my up button and now that heals me. Now the coolest thing is, as you play through the game, when you collect alcohol from various locations, you get loads of alcohol. And as long as you've got alcohol in there, if you click meditation and rest for an hour, all of your potions that you've made will be replenished with the alcohol. And that's a massive useful thing at the start of the game. Um, that's really what I wanted to tell you about at the start of the game. So you start off uh, level one like you can see top left and I really I think it's sort of after level 10 that you start to feel comfortable in this game take your time with the game don't rush it enjoy it listen to all of the stuff that that you see don't skip conversations if you're somebody who wants to rush through a game this isn't the game for you I hope that was useful to you if it was give us a thumbs up please that's much appreciated any comments welcome and have a look at the rest of my channel if you're interested in help with the witcher thanks bye